So the question here that is given to us is, if C represents the boundary of the square with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1, which is oriented in the counterclockwise sense, then the value of the line integral, so uh, this line integral's value, we are to compute that and we are to write that in numerical uh, terms, right, up to two decimal places. So let's see what is the integral, uh, this line integral that comes out when you take the in, this line integration over uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1. So accordingly, so the, our first step would be to visualize this region, right? So what is this region? This is given to be a square. So let me draw the square for you. So we have this x as y-axis, this is your x-axis and this point is origin. So that means this is the point 0, 0. So let's call this point as the point A, right? This is your point. And then we have the point 1, 0. So it would be somewhere here. So let me call this by the name B. So this point is B, 1, 0. And then we have this point C here, which is 1, 1. So this is some point. And we have some point here, D, which is the point 0, 1. So we can draw, uh, join this through the straight lines. So this would be our square, right? And moreover, this square is uh, oriented in the counterclockwise direction. This is given to you in the question. Now, what do you mean by counterclockwise? That means the di given direction is anti-clockwise in nature. So, uh, that means uh, clockwise direction means you are moving in the direction of clock. So, this way, this is your clockwise direction. And anti-clockwise direction means you are moving uh, away from the direction of clock. So, this is your anti-clockwise direction right so accordingly our anti-clockwise direction would be traversed by these arrows so we'll move from point a to the point b then from b to c then from c to d and then from d to the point a so now we are to compute this line integral over c of x square y square dx plus x square minus y square dy right so you see what is this uh, curve c this is your square so this is our square so we can separate this integral into four parts corresponding to each of these line segments so we have a b we have b c we have c d and we have d a over here so i can write this to be the sum of four integrals first defined over a b this whole thing as such plus the other defined over b c right this thing as such plus over c d and then plus over d a remember these directions should be uh, as such only so they, uh, we are going from a to b and then from b to c and then from c to d and then from d to a because if you reverse the direction the signs would alter here so here we have to see what are the limits according to these directions so we can write here for the curve a b now here look at this curve line a b this is a straight line a b and when you uh, move from here to here so that means you are moving from the point a to the point b having coordinate 0 0 and 1 0 so what is the equation of line here so here clearly the equation of line if you have two points you can calculate that that you obtain here to be equal to y is equal to 0. So if y is 0 here when you differentiate this quantity you again obtain its derivative as equal to 0 and moreover here in this case the limits they vary from the point 0 to 1 of what of x they vary from 0 to 1 if because if you notice the limits for y they are constant here so we have the limits of x varying from 0 to the point 1 so this is what we obtain for the curve a b similarly we we will obtain for the curve b c so for the uh, for the straight line b c we are moving from the point 1 comma 0 to the point c 1 comma 1 so here if uh, if you now have two points now you can calculate the equation of line using the uh, usual formula y minus y1 is equal to uh, 
c which is the uh, sorry m which is the slope so that is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 into x minus x1 where you have x1 x2 uh, sorry x1 y1 and x2 y2 as the two given points so using these two given points you can obtain the equation of line as this where this x uh, y and x they are variable quantity so this is the formula that we already know from the lower classes so these are two points using these two points i can write, write down the equation of the line and moreover you can clearly see here x value is remaining the same x here is 1 x here is 1 so i can directly write the value of x is equal to 1 so this is the equation of line uh, even if you obtain it uh, using this formula or you directly write it by looking at these values so it's going to be the same x is equal to 1 so we have this value and because x is equal to 1 when once you differentiate it you have dx is equal to 0 so you obtain these two values so that means now i would require because i will in place of x write 1 in place of dx write 0 so that means in my integral y terms would be remaining so for y terms i have to look for the limits for y they are varying from the point 0 to the point 1 so limits of y they vary from 0 to 1 here okay so similar thing we'll do for our curve cd for the curve cd we are moving from the point 1 comma 1 to the point d which is 0 comma 1 so here if you notice what is the equation of line here x is varying from uh, 1 to 0 so that means the limits of x they are from 1 to 0 and not from 0 to 1 and here the value of y that is remaining constant so here we have y is equal to 1 so this is our equation of the given line and moreover if you differentiate this so you will obtain dy as equal to 0 so this is true for your curve cd and lastly for the curve da we have we are moving from the point 0 comma 1 to the point 0 comma 0 so here if you look at this value x is moving from 0 to 0 so that means we have x is equal to 0 here as the equation of line and when you differentiate this you obtain dx is equal to 0 and moreover the limits of y they are varying from 1 to 0 so we have y is equal to 1 to the point 0 so these are the limits for y in this particular case so using all this information i can now substitute all these values here in place of this particular integral so i have broken down this interval into this four parts now in all of these four parts using this uh, information about the parts i can now substitute the values and then evaluate this integral so let's do that so what do we have here so your integral this now becomes equal to so you have the value here as integration over ab now for ab we have this thing so for ab we will require x varying from 0 to 1 right and uh, moreover here what is the value of y y is 0 dy is 0 so that means this portion is going to be 0 so we are left with this one and uh, we have x square the value of y is 0 here so 0 square into dx so this is the first portion for the second portion we will uh, use the value for the curve dc this portion so using this portion i can uh, here i have the value dx is equal to 0 so that means this first portion is going to be 0 here so i can write 0 plus here what is the value of x x is 1 so i can write 1 square minus y square as such and in in place of dy it would be dy only because dx is 0 and x is equal to 1 here and here the limits of y they vary from 0 to 1 so this is for the second curve again for the third curve we can use uh, this these limits and the this much information so from here Uh, we can use the limits of x as equal to varying from 1 to 0 and uh, moreover here dy is 0 so that means we won't have the second term for the first term we will write x square as such in place of y we will write 1 square uh, and dx would be as such and then for the last term our limits here for y varying from 1 to 0 and here we have dx 0 so we will not write this first term 
So accordingly, for the second term, we would have zero square minus y square dy. So this is what you obtain after applying the uh, all these information. So the next step is just to solve this much portion. So obviously here you obtain zero. Zero integration would be zero, and then here its integration would be uh, it is one minus y square. So its integration would be y minus y cube by three, and the limits of y they here vary from the point zero to the point one. Then here the integration of x square that would be x cube by three. And the limits here would be from one to zero, and then in the last case we have minus y square, so its integration would be y cube by three, and the limits of y that varies from one to the point zero here, so that would be equal to one minus one upon three plus one upon three minus one upon three, right? So we have this this term cancels with this term, so finally you have two upon three. So this is your answer. But you are required to input your answer here in the form of numerical value. So this would roughly be equal to zero point six seven, rounded up to two decimal places. So your answer here is zero point six seven, right? So here we can write the answer as zero point six seven, which is your final answer. So I hope this one is clear to you all.